All right, welcome to Training Tuesday, everyone. Today's webinar is keeping with our Simon's Forming theme. So once again, I'm Heidi Reese with Dayton Superior's Marketing Department. I'm sitting here along with our summer intern, Briston, that you met a couple weeks back, as well as our national training guy, Chuck. And we are sitting in here at the room with the presenter and uh, just I'll introduce him in a moment, but I wanted to do a little housekeeping. Please, if you haven't already, everyone has been muted when they join, but if you've happened to unmute yourself, um, go ahead and please mute for the time being so that everybody has the uh, same experience without disruptions. Um, but don't worry about not being able to ask questions. Uh, we have the chat functionality for that. Anytime during the presentation, if you want to ask a question, please feel free to enter that into the chat functionality of Zoom. And at the end, we'll have a brief question and answer session, and I will state those for you and get them answered. All right, so we hope that you find these Training Tuesday topics and webinars both useful and enjoyable. And just so you know, I think you are aware that we record these every week so that if you want to review something or look at another one that you may have missed last week, um, we can present those to you via the YouTube channels or the Dayton Superior. Okay, so today's topic is about the Simons drop head shoring system. And we'll come to learn things like the structure types and applications, some cost saving benefits along with other additional benefits of the system, product understanding of course, and the components connections and capacities for the system. And to help us expand our knowledge is Ahmed Jumali, and he joined Dayton Superior approximately seven years ago in Simon's department uh, company, and he manages the estimation, bidding, and design of the Simon Key Account commercial projects, and that's nationwide, and he is the Director of Key Accounts Engineering. He has a BSc in Structural Engineering and an MSc in Engineering Management, and along with that, he is a certified PMP, which is a project management professional. And Ahmed has 15 years of combined construction and formwork industry experience, including companies such as Harsco Infrastructure and Luma Systems. So just as a reminder, this presentation is intended for training purposes only. Uh, you can look at DaytonSuperior.com for any technical specifications or other product information that you may need. And with that, tell us a little bit more about the drop head system, Ahmed. Med. JD, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ahmed, just like Heidi mentioned. Uh, today we're going to walk you through the drop head trolling system. This system is it's a simple handset drop head slat formwork system. It was designed in conjunction with trolling contractors, I think about like 20, 30 years ago. Uh, the system has many benefits. You can use it on so many different types of structures. It's mainly used for flat, open slabs with some beams and drop caps and even ramps. Uh, it's a very versatile system. You could do height from six foot eight, I would say to 19 feet. Uh, in clear height, there are so many different type of posts you could use for this system. Uh, it's ideal for repetitive floor plans where you, where you will utilize the reshoring. It's also very good for fast track jobs because it's very high product in productivity and we'll walk you over, walk, walk you through the benefits of the system. Uh, another thing is uh, it's very good for, for jobs that have very small crane capacity because it's a very light system. It's also for, for projects that are tight job size. We don't have a lot of lay, lay down yards and you don't have so much space to store equipment because the system has very few components that will be used. Um, it's, it goes for projects anywhere from uh, 10,000 to 20,000 square foot to 100,000 square foot podium decks. So there's a lot of projects you can use, uh, you can use the system for, and I would say it's mainly for commercial projects. Some of the benefits of this system, it's only three, it has only three main components. Those are the ledgers, it's called the mains also, uh, the LVL, which are the joists, and the posts. There are like few types of posts we can use with this system. It's very quick and set up. Productivity is a, a big advantage for this system. 
a cruise as few as three can erect up to about 6,000 square foot in a day. Uh, this is from experience and feedback we got from a contractor. Uh, it could go two different grids, six by eight and six by six. Uh, the ledgers have three um, uh, three sizes and the, uh, the LVLs have also three sizes. So a grid of six by eight, uh, realistically speaking, will give you at least uh, 42, 42 square foot per, per post. And a grid of six by six would give you around uh, 30 square foot per post because that's accounting for slab edges, columns, uh, and all other uh, structural elements for your, uh, for your structure. Uh, it uses about 25% fewer posts than any other metric system that is in the industry. Um, it's the time productivity and it also um, covers high areas with uh, fewer posts than other products available. Very easy in stripping and um, you usually basically strip the horizontals and about 75% of the system can be you can be moved uh, to the next pore. You leave the post in place, uh, you will strip all the horizontals and you, you'll move them to the next pore or you'll move them to the next level. So some of the other benefits of this system, uh, we could easily provide you with clear aisles, uh, free travel lanes, you could have clear aisles for your ramp, uh, you could have clear aisles for moving equipment around. You can see in the picture that you have a scissor lift or like a forklift could move freely uh, in the building while the system is being set up or already in place. Um, you will need only limited bracing for this uh, system, about every sixth or seventh bay in both directions. Um, that would give you a lot of uh, free space to even stage your equipment, have the uh, uh, the storage frames uh, moving around. You had the workers, other uh, other equipment, or other products uh, laying around in the on the site. Um, it could do multiple elevations within the same deck uh, without actually uh, without having to do a lot of uh, build up or a lot of wood. So if you see in the picture. Uh, you see here we have multiple elevations, whether it's a beam right next to a slab, uh, whether it's a slab step, uh, you will be able to shore up both elevations without the need to do any buildups as opposed to go through uh, the plywood and you will have only six inches between the two elevations and those will be easily carried by the plywood, uh, by the plywood without, the need, without the need to any additional support. Other benefits uh, of this system, it's a very versatile system. Uh, you could do drop caps, you can do beams, uh, you can do cantilevers with it. Uh, cantilevers, um, we could do up to 36 inches of uh, working deck. Uh, you can do cantilevers, I will uh, we'll show you in the later slide uh, how much we can do cantilever with concrete loading. Uh, but in general, this, this system could be could be utilized in so many different construction scenarios. Uh, you could also do ramps up to 12% slope. Uh, so any type of structures, any type of structural scenario you have in your project could be covered by this system. It also gives you very clean drop site. Um, as you can see in the pictures, this is one of the uh, feedbacks we've uh, already received from contractors. They use this system for the first time. Uh, they also mentioned um, how clean and easy to set up, very few pieces. Um, you see here and from the picture, all the posts have jet lock attached already. So standard cross braces can be used, just the standard steel cross braces. Uh, you will not need to um, do a lot of work on site uh, to get the system ready to be set up. It is already ready to be used without attaching any additional uh, components or parts. Uh, one of the main benefits is, is reshoring. Uh, this system is ideal for mid and high rise buildings uh, where you will need reshore posts uh, to stay in place. You see in the picture that uh, it's basically the whole grid is set up. Uh, you'll drop the horizontals and 
the ledgers and LDLs and the horizontals and you move them, which are about 75% of the total system components, and you leave that post in place for reshoring. Uh, most cases, you could do either point-to-point -point, uh, reshoring or you'll have your own uh, reshore design where you only need to, uh, to move posts around. Uh, the main benefit is basically leaving the posts in place for reshoring. Of course, you remember that the load from the port slab must be released. You'd still have uh, the ability to leave the post in place and utilize it for reshoring. Uh, in some cases, some uh, plywood will be captured, and that would only be under that post. It could be easily removed, uh, but you see from the picture here, we have a, a very clean slab where it's ready for reshoring, and you could just uh, move your equipment uh, up to the next pool above this one without the need to install any additional posts. Another benefit is storage and shipping. Uh, the system usually is shipped with uh, OSHA compliant uh, storage cards. Um, once you get it on site, you will not need to use a uh, crane. You can basically use forklifts and move things around. Uh, all these storage cards have casters and you can move them easily, easily move them around. Um, you could ship about 6,000 square foot of equipment uh, in one, one flatbed, flatbed truck. Uh, that's Definitely a big save on the freight cost. Uh, in general, pools on average are about 10,000 square foot. If you have a 10,000 square foot, 10 to 12,000 square foot uh, pool, you only need two trucks shipping of equipment. And that's a big advantage comparing to any other system in the industry. Um, also, everything comes color coded. So if you see from the picture, all the components are color coded, and you'll see later in later slides that also the drones will be color coded. So you will already know uh, what parts and what pieces you're receiving for the drawings. And you could stage them off the, of the truck directly to where you want to use them. So some, um, some description and identification, some of the components, these are the main components uh, of the system we're talking about three types of posts and three types of ledgers and three types of LDL. It's, it's actually three sizes of ledgers and three sizes of LDL. The posts are three types. You can see that the primary post with extension here, uh, we have two different extensions for this post. We also can utilize other types of posts for higher elevations uh, with an adapter plate. So the system could have much more than these uh, these parts shown on this slide, uh, but these are the main components of the slide. Uh, for storage, you can see that the quantities per rack for posts, you have about 50 posts. For a lighter post, it's 60, the number three posts. Uh, ledger, you'll have 33 and 68 for the uh, LVL. It's a very lightweight um, system. Uh, you can see the weight of the, of the post. Uh, the tallest, biggest post is about 88 pounds. And the number three post, which is mostly utilized uh, in decks, in PT decks, I'd say, uh, anywhere between 10 and um, eight to 10 inches slab, you'll always use that number three post, which is mostly used, and it's a very light post. Um, the LVL joist, we have, as I mentioned, we have three sizes. Uh, you get the four, four foot joist, five foot joist, and the six foot joist. Uh, those are color coded parts are color coded and they will come on the uh, shoreline drawings also color coded. Uh, so you will uh, you will be able to tell the size of um, of your joyous just by looking at it without having to measure it. Uh, these are also actually the um, uh, the actual sizes of it in a cross-sectional cut. The ledgers are also the same thing. They're also known as mains. The six foot, eight foot, and ten foot. Uh, this is where it comes. This is where we mention the six by six grid or six by eight grid. Uh, six by eight grid is is the most uh, commonly used grid. I'd, I'd say you could do about up to twelve point five inches concrete slab with a six by eight grid. Uh, the ten foot ledger is mostly used for cantilevers and working decks. 
and, and also anywhere you need to span over eight, uh, eight feet for clear aisle purposes or other purposes. But in that case, you'll have to mid-span support that 10-foot ledger. Not necessarily mid-span it, but you'll have to support it at least back to an eight-foot span. Uh, these are the components of the post. Uh, we have, as we mentioned, we have the primary post, uh, we have the number three post, which is the lightest one, uh, and we have the two foot extension here. Uh, there's also the three foot extension that uh, has been added to the, uh, to the system about a year ago, and we've already used it for a main project here in California. Uh, the, as you see, the, the post comes with a, an attached draw pad, there are two types of draw pads. Uh, the main one we we have here is the universal drop head, and it's also in the lower position uh, always for the application of the drop head system. Uh, it's about 14 inches, uh, so you will not need to attach that on site. It will always be uh, delivered to the drop site uh, mounted on the post. Uh, other Type of post that we could utilize with this system about six or seven years ago, we uh, we we realized that we need to utilize this system for higher elevation. Uh, we have the uh, the short fast posts, they are aluminum, high capacity tall posts uh, that we designed an adapter plate where we could mount the the drop head, the universal drop head to it. Uh, so now. We are utilizing this post, which could reach up to 19 feet in clear height uh, with a capacity of around nine kips at that height, but uh, you'll need to consult with, uh, with engineering or the salesperson you're dealing with uh, to give you that uh, exact capacity. Uh, but it will give you the ability to utilize the system um, for higher elevations. It's also, it has the ability to stack two posts on top of each other. That would require uh, a lot of bracing, but it, it is an available uh, solution or function of that system. Cross braces, you mentioned the posts have already, they, they already have the jet locks attached, so you could use any type of steel um, uh, cross braces. Uh, it is for the grid sizes, so the grids are, we got eight foot, six foot, and 10 foot ledgers and four, five, and six foot LVL. They have all the cross braces that are needed for this system. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you only need to brace it six or seven, every six or seventh bay on both directions. So in this picture, you see this is a corner uh, where you would start your, your shoring system direction with a box. Post. So you'll have four post box, and then the next one will be will be braced about six or seven bay later. It depends on uh, the details of the structure. Uh, other components. This is something uh, bracing slider. This is used for um, any sloping slabs. Uh, it is. Uh, it's when the two posts are not lined up, so the jet locks are not on the same. Elevation, so the regular cross braces will not be attached. And the slider basically provides you with the ability of having of having the hole that where you could attach the jet locks to at a lower elevation where it could line up with the with the next post. Uh, you see in the in the picture on the uh, lower right corner, you have two jet locks here at different elevation, and that because we were able to attach them to the to the bracing slider. It could be used this way with a bracing slider or it could be used uh, with timber brace and timber clamps. Some contractors prefer it to be um, not used and using the timber bracing. Some prefer this as it is a little more sturdy. These are some connections of the drop head system and how you actually can connect the, uh, the LVLs and the uh, ledgers to the drop head. 
Uh, you can see that the it's a simple connection. Uh, one worker could basically set this up and start the, uh, the corner or the starting point of the system. Other connections you have, it's uh, on the top left corner, that is the LVL to the ledger. That's where the LVL will sit and you have your plywood on top. Uh, the next one to the right is the ledger to ledger connection. The ledger to ledger connection is used when you need to um, change the orientation for some reasons, change your orientation of your grid. Changing the orient orientation of your grid allows you to either can a lever outside the building or you're switching the orientation because of the slope uh, or you just need to have um, a longer bay than just a six foot LVL that could provide you. Um, you got also uh, the clip of ledger to ledger. So once you change your orientation, you just need to use that one ledger to ledger clip. Uh, and then the cantilever, uh, the cantilever one on the top right corner, where it shows is a 10 foot ledger and you have about four feet of cantilever. About a foot of it is inside the building and three foot outside. System capacities, these are just examples. This is not exactly what you can do with the system. Uh, so you, in, in a six by six grid, you might be able to go up to 18 inches. Uh, a fully uh, designed, calculated chore and drawings will be provided, uh, but these are just examples that for a six by six grid, you could use um, you, you could use these three posts at those different heights. So at 14 inches slab, uh, you have 8,100 pounds of uh, chore load, and you could use those three posts at these three different heights, which is 10 foot eight, um, nine foot eight, and 12 foot eight. Uh, you could actually do much more than the 14 inches with this, uh, with this system. Six, six by eight grid, uh, the maximum you could do is 12.5 uh, inches slabs. That's not a very common slab, but we've seen it before. Um, and you could also do six by eight grid, on a thicker concrete slab, but uh, with the option of um, reshoring or adding a mid span post to the eight foot ledger at a later time. Uh, usually it's preference, but uh, we provide all the options that we, we could utilize the system for. This is an example of, uh, of the shoring drawings that we supply for any projects we get. Uh, you'll be provided with this color-coded plan, of course, with other sections, uh, with all associated sections. And any of the corners, it might not be clear here, but all the corners or whatever the system should be started, it will be pointed out as it is a starting point. This is a modular system, so the designer will provide you with the layout and a starting point where you put your first post, and from there on, you're using either the six foot or the eight foot, and you just follow the color coded plan. You see on the right side of the slide, uh, there is the, the components. You will find these uh, color coded components on the drawings on the cover sheet. You see that the six foot is, is red and the eight foot is green, and so on, and all the LDLs. Also, the post, the type of the post, um, the clips and the connections are all color coded and, and have its own symbol. It will be very easy to be uh, very easy to read for superintendents, engineers, and workers and foremen on site. Some type of fillers, you could also uh, utilize all type of columns. Uh, you're not going to have any problem with any columns. Very minimum amount of fillers will be used when you're utilizing the system. Other filler ideas, um, you could start your shoring about six or six inches or 12 inches off the wall, and you'd still be able to either cantilever the plywood about three inches, sometimes six inches, uh, or actually do 12 inches or even more based on the, uh, the concrete load, and either have a continuous nailer or add another, um, uh, another filler or another post to support the rest of the plywood. 
but th these are just basically filler ideas. Edge form cantilever, uh, per OSHA regulation, any PT slab would require about 36 inches um, working deck. And the system with a 10 foot ledger would uh, provide you 36 inches working deck from the slab edge to the tow board uh, per the uh, OSHA regulation. Uh, with concrete, you see here it says 36 inches uh, for eight, ledge, eight foot ledger and 48 inches for 10 foot ledger. Uh, so all this will be provided by uh, providing the in, in the shoring uh, drawings, uh, but just, just to show you what the system could do. Um, ledgers and LVLs both can be cantilevered. Uh, maximum cantilever for the uh, LVL you could do is uh, is about 12 inches for the six foot LVL, and for the ledger is the same thing. It's about 12 inches. Uh, using plastic spot to prevent the post from movement. Uh, you, you could also use clips and uh, other methods of preventing the post uh, from moving. Uh, it's a very versatile system. You could do a lot of different things with it. Uh, you could use different parts. There's a lot of parts and, and pieces from other systems could be utilized and used on this system. And applications, non-typical garage beams, is just to show you that um, the system could be used on any type of structure, technically, uh, whether there are beams, slabs, drop caps, uh, could easily be utilized and replace any system that you might be, uh, you might have been using in the past. Um, this is a plan showing that how a band beam could be, uh, could be shored up with this system. Uh, you see that we have about eight foot wide band beam, and we're utilizing the 10 foot ledger with a mid span post. And a, so for this band beam, uh, we have uh, we have a grid of about six by five. The 10 foot ledger is, is supported with a mid, mid span post, and then you got six foot LBL. The band beam, in this case, I think I remember it was about three feet deep. So it is something we uh, felt like concrete depth we could easily shore up with this system. Same thing for columns and for other um, type of clear flat slabs. You can see here you have a very clear um, continuous grid. Uh, even with the columns, you're not having any issues with, um, with setting up and erecting all the equipment quickly. And I think that's basically all we have for today. So if you guys have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Yeah, so we have a couple. Um, thank you for the presentation, great job. The first question is, a six by eight pattern would yield 48 square foot per post, a typical bay for flat slab. Is using 42 square foot per post a quick or a good estimating tool for a quick post takeoff? Yes, because it is 48 when it is continuous. I mean, at the end of any grid, uh, the last post will not give you the 48. So on average, if you design or draw back by hand any six by eight grid, the last post always will have just one side and the other side is nothing. Uh, so 42 for a, for a flat, not too complex uh, concrete deck is a good estimation tool. Great. I myself use 42. Okay. <laughs> so do you have a post load chart for the primary post plus 36 inch extension? Uh, we, we do, we have, uh, We've utilized the post and we have done the calculation and all the posts, but at, at the moment we don't have one that we could uh, distribute outside the company. But we will be able to provide you uh, with the capacities required and proof of that. And also we are having it uh, tested. Okay. And what is the general availability of that 36 inch extension for rental and purchase? I think it's available for rental. Uh, I would say uh, talk to your sales guy uh, about 
renting that or purchasing it. It is available for rental. We are bidding jobs using the three foot extension. Uh, about purchase, probably it is the same thing. It is available, uh, but I would recommend you speak to uh, the salesperson you deal with. And Jeff, I can uh, provide you with that contact information if you don't have it. Jeff is the one who answer, or asked the question. And lastly, we have on, if we go to slide 21, uh, it appears to show it appears to show a leaning shore to support the 10-foot uh, ledger. What does that component look like, and is it its availability? Leaning shore to support it. Slide 21, is that the one I'm showing? Uh, you're showing, yes, 21. So on page 21, appear to show a leaning shore to support the cantilevering 10-foot ledger. I think there we go. 20. 20. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. So what does that component look like and what's its availability? So this component was, uh, I think it was the concept with the, uh, when the, the, the system was first sort of designed was never utilized because loading wise it was actually never needed. A uh, 10 foot ledger could give you four foot cantilever. Uh, so if you have if you have a 10 foot ledger you could support it at foot zero and foot six and you have six foot span and a four foot cantilever without the need to any additional support. In in situations when we when we were only able to have Five foot span and five foot cantilever. We would we managed to support it with another ledger, another ledger and two posts, and that second ledger will support the cantilever ledger from underneath. Uh, but to answer your question, this piece on the top right corner is not available, and because mainly it was hardly ever needed. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Um, again, everyone, we're a little over the time, so I'm going to thank you all for joining us. And remember that we have these every Tuesday on different topics. We have recorded this presentation, so we'll send out an email as soon as it's available for you to download and forward if you need to to other people. Um, and I really appreciate you showing up. And thanks, Ahmed, for, for talking us through all of this and helping us to understand it better. I appreciate that. So everyone have a great Tuesday.